Today we're looking at the Panda Konomi 3D by Big Tree Tech. I'm going to be unboxing it and then I'm going to be installing it on my Bamboo Lab A1 and showing you how to set it up. It's basically a display that attaches to the tool head and shows you what's going on with the printer and its current status and stuff like that. You'll see what I mean when we get into it. It's very customizable. This comes in two boxes, so one is the case, the outer shell and one is the screen itself. And you can see here I have the A1 series variant. They do make this for other printers but specifically focusing on the A1 today. So we're going to start by opening the case package which contains our outer shell that will fix to the tool head. Inside each box you'll find a slip with a QR code that'll take you to the Panda Konomi wiki page which tells you everything you need to know about this device and how to set it up. It's a very useful guide. And then we obviously have the clear plastic housing and there's also a lens in there which basically just acts like a bit of a magnifying glass. They do recommend you use this that's why it's part of the kit but I may have ended up taking mine out because it looks much better for videos. The magnifier kind of spoils the viewing angles a little bit but you'll see what I mean later. The last thing in the packet is just a bracket which will basically hold our screen in place. Now onto the second box which is the screen and the magic of the operation because it actually contains quite a lot of electronics on and a rubber duck which doesn't really add anything but it's fun to have. You'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So just think about that. Right so further in the box you've got this cable here which will attach to the screen and I'll show you how that feeds through into the printer tool head. The other end will connect to your available AMS slot assuming you only have one AMS attached to your Bamboo Lab A1. There will be two AMS slots on the back so one should be free and that's where this device is going to draw its power from. Inside this hardened case is where you'll find the circular display and all the chips already attached to it. So there's nothing else that needs doing here, this comes as a complete unit. Inside the box is a sticker and some extra jumper cables which I won't be needing today for my A1. And so let me show you the screen itself which has a screen protector on so don't forget to take that off before you put it in as it won't be accessible again once we install it. This is the back where you can see that ESP32 controller and this is obviously Wi-Fi enabled. It's Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz and that is the only bandwidth that it will communicate on. So if you only use 5 gigahertz, this device won't work, it'll give you problems. But most routers these days know the difference and they can operate on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz for backwards compatibility like this. Inside the box is an adapter for that cable I showed you earlier and basically this just plugs in and makes it into that AMS connection, allowing you to draw power from the machine so don't lose this one otherwise it won't work. I'll just quickly show you this and these two cables join on this end. They have a tab so it's really impossible to get it the wrong way. It won't let you get it the wrong way. And then that's ready to install on the machine like it is. And now to assemble the screen portion you need to put the lens in like that into the case and then you can put your screen in facing in this direction. It has to be facing in this direction. That USB-C port there has to be at the top. And this clear bracket here that holds everything in place has cutouts and it even points out USB-C goes here so it's hard to get wrong. And once you line it up it'll just clip into place. So now I can take it over to my machine and show you the installation procedure. If you've never taken the front cover off before then you just squeeze at the bottom, you give it a little pinch and start to lift up towards you and then the whole thing will just lift off. That yellow wheel as well that's attached to the filament cog will just pull off. Mine wasn't yellow, it was Mike Wazowski's eye, but yours will be yellow if you have the stock bamboo extruder kit. Now the cable feeds through that small hole there, don't try to feed it anywhere else because it's really not going to like it. I thought this bit was going to be more finicky and tricky than it actually was, it was surprisingly easy. Then that cable just needs to connect into the back of the display, there's only one place it can go and there's only one way around it can go. So don't try to force it and just take a step back and look at it again if you're having a problem. Then once you've got that cable all sorted, the top hooks on and then the bottom just pushes until it clicks. Then we're going to want to take that cable and start on our cable management which I am going to do very lightly just for this video. I'll take my time later on and use the zip ties that were included to make it a bit neater. Now I'll just feel behind the printer until I can find that AMS slot and I'll plug that cable in there which will then give me power to turn it on. Once you've done all that and the printer's finally powered on we'll be able to see if the display is working correctly. And mine is looking pretty good here so it will show up with a QR code which you should scan with your phone which will then connect it via Wi-Fi to your phone. And then that'll automatically start the setup process. So it'll start with just asking you what language you want. Obviously for me it's English. And then it'll take you to this Wi-Fi page where you need to point it towards your router and give it the password. Because this display is able to function because it can talk to your printer over Wi-Fi. It doesn't actually use the connection that we made into that AMS slot for anything other than power. The next thing you'll come to is this binding page. Now it should automatically find your printer if it's turned on. But if that authorization access code is missing when you do find your printer, then you need to go on your printer and go here to LAN only. Now we're not looking to enable this feature, but it will give you the access code there. 
And then once you've entered that on there, hopefully it says binding successful and that is the end of the setup process. So then it was just basically time to give it a test run. It will display quite a lot of things on here such as nozzle temperature and when it's homing and when it's just generally printing and also you can customize the GIFs. If you just connect to it by Wi-Fi you can change them so I can have Homer Simpson dancing around in a circle. This is absolute peak technology for me. Seriously look at it, I've been staring at it for hours now. But it is a seriously cool device for the 30 or so pounds that it costs from AliExpress. I think personalization always has a price and it's always worth it to some people. You can also set when these GIFs come on too, so I just have these set for standby at the moment to demonstrate them. And then when it's actually printing it shows me stuff like nozzle temperatures and what it's currently doing. But I did mention earlier in the video that with that lens it made the viewing angles a bit off and also it was really difficult to record. So I took it out and now obviously dust will settle on it and it's prone to scratches if you knock it, but in my opinion it looks a lot better with it off. So that's just something to bear in mind. I wouldn't advise you use it like that and I'm sure Big Tree Tech don't say you can use it like that, but I'm going to do it like that anyway. But thanks for coming and watching my unboxing and setup of the Panda Konomi 3D. There'll be a link down in the description where you can get one of these from. It will be an affiliate link, but it helps the channel and doesn't cost you any more. If you're not after one, but just enjoyed the video, then please consider subscribing. I have some very interesting 3D printing content coming up for January.